But anyway, so hopping into the stocks that I'm going to be watching this week. Honestly, I scanned through around like 300 to 350 stocks every single weekend to find some setups that I like. And out of that 300 to 350, I only like 9 or 10 of them. Uh, which that's saying something about the market. Because the market's getting pretty overextended. I don't want to chase puts. However, everything still looks super bearish. So... We're just going to keep a very small list this week. So the very first stock is going to be AMD. Now with AMD, I am going to be watching both ways. As you can see, we kind of got this little hammer at the bottom of a downtrend. But with AMD, if it breaks below 79.43, I have no support until 76.17, which is going to be the 127.2% extension from this pivot low to pivot high. If it breaks below there, I then have a price target of 75.55, which is going to be the monthly person's pivot support. Actually, no, 75.33. But anyways, that's going to be the monthly person's pivot support. And then if we break below there, no support until 71.74, which is going to be the weekly person's pivot support. Now, on the flip side, if the market does end up short squeezing, I will be very interested in AMD above 83.3, which is going to be above this low right here. If AMD can break above there, I then have a price target at 84.34, which is going to be the weekly person's pivot. 85.41, which is going to be previous support, which should now act as resistance. And then honestly, if it breaks above there, no resistance until 88.27, which is going to be your quarterly person's pivot resistance. Again, I talk about the person's pivots in my new trading ebook, so if you guys do want to learn about that, make sure to check out the ebook. Now, the next stock I'm going to be watching this week is going to be Amazon. So looking at Amazon, there's a couple things that could end up playing out right here. As we can see, this 101.26 area has been super strong support, but also at the same time, what does it look like Amazon is forming at the bottom of a downtrend, a head and shoulders? Now, this is pretty rare because mainly they're going to be at the top of an uptrend, but I have seen them at the bottom of a downtrend, and in that case, it's actually a continuation pattern to the downside. So. There's a few things that could happen with Amazon this week. Maybe it comes up and it forms shoulder number two. If that's the case, it needs to get up to 115.8 or it just ends up breaking below 101.25. So if it breaks below 101.25, I have no support until 100, which is going to be psychological support. Then if it breaks below there, 97.94, which is going to be your weekly person's pivot support. And then finally below there, no support until 93.72. Now again, if the market does end up short squeezing and Amazon can break above Friday's high, I have no resistance until 109.06, which was going to be last week's high. If it breaks above there, 109.72, which is going to be your weekly person's pivot resistance. Then if it's able to crack above there, no resistance until 112.64, 115.8, and 118.18, which is going to be your quarterly person's pivot resistance. Now the next stock I am going to continue to be watching is going to be Beyond. So with Beyond, we're currently in swing trades for July. We have the 25 calls and we sold the 30 calls, making it a debit spread. The reason I like Beyond is due to the stochastic divergence and I think the risk to reward here is really, really good, especially because those debit spreads were super cheap anyways if we're looking at beyond we can see on the daily time frame we got a buy signal here price continued to go lower we got a higher buy signal here and then we got an even higher buy signal here while price has just been consolidating this is a divergence and typically you are going to see a reversal in price so with beyond honestly i'm just looking to see this thing pop hopefully we can get those 25 calls in the money real quick and we can sell out most of our position. But yeah, I would continue to keep your eye on this just due to that divergence. If you guys are familiar with divergences, typically you will see an explosive move once the stock price actually decides to move in favor with the indicator. But yeah, keep a very close eye on Beyond. We have that daily squeeze. So I would like to see this thing pop. Now the next stock I'm gonna be watching is gonna be MU. If we're looking at MU on the daily time frame, we can see that we got a little hammer at the bottom of a downtrend, lots of volume. So with MU, I am going to be watching both ways. If it breaks below 53.6, I have no support until 50. Now, if it breaks above Friday's high at 56.32, we could see 56.87, which is going to be the weekly person's pivot. Above there, we could see 57. 
Then we have a nice gap to fill to 57.55. And then finally, weekly person's pivot resistance at 59.94. Now, the next stock I'm going to be watching this week, God forbid me, is going to be Boeing. So if we're looking at Boeing, actually, this looks pretty interesting. The volume is spiking. We did get a buy signal on Friday on the stochastic. So personally, what I'm going to be watching with Boeing is going to be a break above 139. If it can break above 139, I have no resistance until 142.21, which is going to be that high point right here. And then if it breaks above there, 146.1 is going to be the weekly person's pivot resistance. 149, 150, which is going to be psychological resistance. And then 153.81, which is going to be your monthly person's pivot resistance. Now, on the flip side, if Boeing does break below Thursday and Friday's low, which is at 131.5, I will be looking to go short with a price target of 126.45. Next price target 123.83. That's going to be a gap entry fill to get this thing down to 122.19. If Boeing does break below there, I then have no support until 117.29. And then finally this low right here at 113.02. Now the next stock I'm going to be watching is going to be GME. Uh, GME, we talked about this a while ago. It broke out of the bull flag here, went to a falling wedge, broke out the falling wedge. Now it's continuing to look strong against the overall market. As we know, when the market sells off, GME typically likes to go up. But as we can see, GME is in a weekly squeeze. It is also in a monthly squeeze. So I would pay very close attention to that. Anyway, so going back to the daily time frame with GME, I'm personally more interested to the upside, increasing on balance volume, holding above the moving averages. Momentum will turn light blue on the squeeze. What I'm going to be looking for is going to be a break above 136. If GME can break above 136, we could see 142.64 again, which is going to be that weekly person's pivot resistance. 148.06, which is going to be the, I believe this is the quarterly person's pivot. 150, which is going to be a psychological resistance. 153, which is going to be that high point right here. And then 156.2, which is going to be the monthly person's pivot resistance. Now, personally, I am not interested in the downside on GME. I would like to see this thing have a nice move to the upside this week. And I would like to see that weekly and monthly squeeze end up firing. Now, the next stock I'm going to be watching is going to be NVIDIA. As we can see on NVIDIA, we kind of had this uh, inverse cup and handle that it broke below on Thursday. But the thing that I'm watching is this on-balance volume. The on-balance volume actually shows that buyers are coming back in. So I am going to be watching it both ways. If NVIDIA can break above 160.25, I will be bullish. I have no resistance until 167.21, which will be your weekly person's pivot resistance, and then 168.68. If NVIDIA can get above there, I will be aiming for that daily 21 EMA at 173.79. Now, if the market does end up dumping and a video breaks below 153.28, I have no support until 150, which is going to be that psychological support level. If it breaks below 150, I then have no support until 144.65. So again, watching both ways on a video calls above 160.25 and then puts below 153.25. Next up, I'm going to be watching Meta again. That on-balance volume is kind of hinting that buyers are accumulating stock. Anyways, what I'm going to be watching on Meta is going to be a break above 165.9. If it breaks above there, 169, which is going to be the old low right there. If it's able to break above there, I then have no resistance until 171, which is going to be the weekly person's pivot. 171.73, which is going to be the monthly person's pivot resistance. 172.58, which is the high right here before the gap. And then if it's able to break above there, we could see 175, which is going to be the gap fill. Now again, on the flip side, if the market does end up dumping, I will be watching this below 159.61. If we break below there, I have a pretty big gap that it needs to fill to the downside of 153.96. 152.22, which is going to be your weekly person's pivot support. 150, again, psychological support level. And then 149.82, which is going to be your monthly person's pivot support. Next up, I'm going to be watching SPY. So if you guys didn't know, I did end up uploading my SPY and QQQ technical analysis yesterday. If you guys didn't see that video, the link will be down in the description. It's going to be very important that you mark all of these levels. Anyways, the thing that I like with SPY 
is it doji at the bottom of the downtrend. Typically when that happens, we will see a reversal, but again, we're in a really weird market right now. So I will be watching this thing above 370.5 for calls to take it up here. But if the market does end up breaking below 362.17, I have no support until 358.65, 357.74, and then I have no support until all the way down here at 350. But yeah, like I said, if you guys didn't see this fine QQQ technical analysis, make sure to go watch that video. Link is down in the description. And then the final stock I'm going to be watching this week is going to be Tesla. Honestly, I'm more interested in Tesla to the downside, so I would be very interested below 618.50 if it can break below there i have no support until 600 which is going to be an 18 dollar drop then honestly if it breaks below 600 i have no support until 578 which is going to be the 127.2 percent extension as well as the weekly person's pivot support now again uh, the unbalanced volume it does kind of look bullish so i mean we could watch both ways but with Tesla, I am more interested in the downside. It's also in a monthly squeeze. If anything, maybe it pumps up to that daily 21 EMA and I'll maybe look for a swing trade there. But as of now, not really interested in upside moves on Tesla. More so interested below the 618.50 level. But yeah, that is going to wrap it up for today. That is going to be everything I'm going to be watching this week. 